global events affect foreign concessions in Tianjin. Conspirators face retribution during the war. An assassin talks about the fate traitors operating in Tianjin will face when exposed. Tianjin is caught in turbulent times during the 20th century. Those years of strife are filled with stories that reveal the character of an era. In the summer of 1919, the world is a different place. In London, a victory parade is held. The cheering of hundreds of thousands of people will ring out across the Thames. Eight months earlier, German Kaiser Wilhelm II's army was defeated and World War I came to a close. In China's capital, the northern government uses the five-colored flag above the forbidden city to send the message that justice finally defeats the big foreign powers. China makes its contribution to victory in World War I, and people now believe the humiliation suffered since the Opium War will be washed away. One hundred twenty kilometers away in Tianjin, people in the British and French concessions gather at church and weep with joy. Their relief at the victory over Germany eases the trauma of war. A heavy burden lifts as the bells ring. In the German concession across the road, it's a different story. The tolling of the bells irritates the Germans. Defeat is a hard thing to swallow. That was a symbolic day in the history of Tianjin. The smiles of the victors stand in stark contrast to the tears of the defeated. The mixed feelings create tension. In Tianjin, the conflict has yet to end. The busy intersection of South Jiafang Road and Puko Road is the former Wilhelm Square. It's where the Germans erected a statue of the Frankish hero Roland proudly bearing a sword and gazing out over the square. Germany's surrender brings about a dramatic change. Numerous torches light up the night as drunk and restless British and French residents swarm into the square. They throw a rope around the neck of the statue. They pull hard and it begins to shudder and then topples as the crowd cheers. This historic scene is witnessed by a prominent German within the concession, whose spiritual world collapses along with the statue. His gun looks menacing, but it's been rendered harmless. Konstantin von Hanneken serves in the German army from the age of 20. 
He then comes to China after his military service ends. His excellent military record leads him into the service of Li Hongzhang as an advisor. He trains army units and builds artillery batteries in Tianjin. His career in China becomes successful, and after decades of effort, he realizes his dream of being rich. In the summer of 1914, an urgent telegram from the German embassy reaches Hennigan. He grows anxious as he reads it. Germany is declaring war on France. This conflict will draw in many other countries. Hennigan is uncertain how China will react. As the war begins, the question of whether to participate turns into a debate between Li Yanhong, President of the Republic of China, and his premier, Duan Chi Rei. In the concessions, the relationships between people of different countries are tense. They all hope China would take their homeland side or remain neutral. Germany invades France, and Britain sends troops across the English Channel to help with its defense. The concessions may be a long way from the battlefield, but the harmony among the Europeans begins to disintegrate and turn to hatred. The British hang a sign at the gate of Victoria Park saying, barbarians and dogs are not allowed in. The Germans respond with a slogan on the wall saying, God punishes Britain. Yidangangabova, This neo-Romanesque building on South Jiafeng Road is the former German club. Hanneken uses it to raise funds for the war. He's a former German army officer and loyal to his nation. There are white, black, and yellow boards in the image of German soldiers, representing different amounts of money. His fellow Germans use thumbtacks to express their love for their nation. The black and white boards record contributions of 10 and 100 Reichsmarks. They fill with thumbtacks. The yellow one, which records 1,000 Reichsmark contributions, is dotted with just a few thumbtacks. Hennigan grows outraged at this. He donates almost all of his wealth and presses the remaining thumbtacks onto the yellow soldier, as if dressing the soldier in a suit of armor. The political alliances are quickly changing. In March of 1917, Li Yuanhong is forced to step down. Duan Chi Wei, winner of the power struggle, declares that China will join the Allies and send laborers to Europe. China declares war on Germany. An order to take back the German concession in Tianjin is soon issued. The Chinese government begins to repatriate all Germans in China and confiscates their property. On the 16th of March in 1917, fear fills Tianjin's German concession. The diplomatic commissioner of the Chinese government leads 300 policemen carrying the five-colored flag toward the German concession they plan to take it back. The commissioner rides in a carriage and gives orders. The hooves of the horses and stamp of the policeman's feet 
echo through the streets and alleys. It's the 57th year of Tianjin's position as a commercial port for foreigners in China. In nearly six decades, it's the first time the Chinese government ever raises its voice. A century ago, the busiest docks in Tianjin are on the western bank of the High River. Weathered remnants of those docks are the only reminders of that prosperous time. In January of 1919, hundreds of Germans boarded ships here and were repatriated to their homeland. Germany's defeat is a disaster for Hanneken. His name and those of his family appear on the first list of Germans forced to leave. He uses all his connections in a failed effort to remain in China. Meanwhile, the Paris Peace Conference convenes in the Palace of Versailles. Japanese representative Sayonji Kenmochi gives a speech that infuriates the Chinese. He puts forward the idea that Japan should inherit all that Germany held in the province of Shandong. Faced with Japan's ambition of nibbling away at Chinese territory, U.S. President Thomas Woodrow Wilson remains silent. Though it's in the winner's camp of World War I, China finds itself being pushed aside as key decisions loom regarding its territory. The May 4th movement begins, but the rage and indignation of the Chinese people doesn't extinguish Japan's ambitions. Today, the buildings of this relatively well-preserved block in the former Japanese concession are unlike those of other concessions. Most are apartment buildings. Only a few are villas. The Japanese in the concession include officials, concession managers, merchants, doctors, teachers, artists, lawyers, even prostitutes and former samurai warriors. People from all walks of life live in a fantasy-like society that flourished in the concession. In 1901, Huping Street passes through the Japanese and French concessions. The street is located within the Japanese concession. It's crowded with shops, theaters, restaurants, hotels, and tea houses, and is the busiest street in the Japanese concession. Nobles and business elites visit the street every day. People of various classes come here. In those days, the Green Gang is a Chinese gang with a long history. Its members turned the area into the largest smuggling and drug trafficking center in northern China. Restaurants and foreign firms become tobacco houses and prostitution dens. One day in 1921, a Japanese man wearing Chinese clothes enters a tea house in the Japanese concession. Kenji Dohara is the assistant to the Japanese military attaché in China. He is seeking a notorious gang member to ask him to become a teacher. Wei Dakua leads the Tianjin branch of the Green Gang. He wants to reinforce his position with the help of the Japanese. He accepts Kenji Dohara as a disciple, not realizing that he is being drawn into a Japanese scheme. Kenji Dahara wants to exploit the huge influence of the Green Gang. Both men have secret agendas and plan to take advantage of the other.
Number 70 Anshan Road is a Spanish-style wood and brick building. It has a poetic nickname, the Garden of Serenity. For a time, it's the home of China's last emperor, Puyi. The young man moves here when he's told he must leave the Forbidden City. Puyi is 19 years old in November of 1924 when he leaves the Forbidden City. Three months later, the Japanese envoy helps him settle in the Japanese concession. The journey from emperor to civilian will not remove him from the spotlight. With support from remnants of the Qing imperial court, his goal is to restore the old dynasty. But he can't see that he's being lured into a trap. Ribbon 虎爷 is not the only one the Japanese are watching. Tianjin's Five Avenues district is filled with old European-style buildings. The neighborhood is now quiet and orderly. The plates on some villas carry the names of former owners. These people include presidents, warlords, and provincial military governors. In the turbulent era of the early Republic, these up-and-coming military and political heavyweights find the space in the concessions to create a strong undercurrent in Tianjin. This villa is the former official residence of Yan Wei Cheng Williams. He served as Premier of China in 1926, but was eventually ousted by his rivals. From then on, he lives in seclusion in Tianjin, no longer involved in politics. But the city is not really the peaceful place of his dreams. Yen is often invited to Japanese parties. He writes in his biography that different political factions, such as the Jili clique, Anhui clique, Fengtian clique, and congressmen, all stick to their own social circles and never associate with others. The Japanese gather members of the various factions together through the parties they host. Amid a party atmosphere, Faction members seem to forget the hatred that exists among them. These parties are well planned, but are about more than just serving of vintage wine or fine food. Each and every aspect is designed to help the Japanese figure out who their future partners could be and who might become a stumbling block. At each toast, smiles hide the scheme. In the years after Tianjin opens as a commercial port, it's under the control of the British. It will even influence the fate of China. In the 20th century, things are changing. With expansion on its mind, Japan gradually takes the leading role in Tianjin. Tianjin's Balitai district has many key universities, but 90 years ago, it's nothing more than weed-covered fields. In 1919, Zhang Boling establishes a university in this open space. It's named Nankai University. 
Years later, the Japanese will establish a farm adjacent to it. In October of 1927, a Japanese citizen is posted to the farm. He's not here to help till the soil. His assignment is to collect intelligence about Nankai University's anti-Japanese. Japan dislikes the activities of this university. In November of that year, Zhang Boling returns from a trip to Northeast China. He immediately warns that they don't realize how dangerous the situation is until witnessing things in the Northeast. Research Association of Nankai University is established shortly afterwards. On the night of September 18th in 1931, Jap agents sabotaged the South Manchuria Railway and Japan blamed China. They use this as a pretext to attack the military barracks on the outskirts of the city. The event will become known as the Mukden Incident. Facing pressure from the international community, Japan needs to find a puppet leader established in Chuko Colony. They look to Puyi, China's former emperor. Two months later, Kenji Dohara secretly returns to the Japanese concession in Tianjin. He takes up residence at the Tokiwa Hotel. An article in the social welfare newspaper the following day sends him into a panic. The newspaper reports all of his movements and even names the hotel he's staying at. He meets Puyi in the Garden of Serenity and explains that the Japanese army will support him in establishing Manchuko in Northeast China. This is also revealed by the newspaper, which warns local citizens that Dohara might instigate violence in Tianjin, or even spirit Puyi away to Northeast China. The Japanese operative is being closely watched. Wang Yimin is the leader of the Tianjin security force. With information provided by undercover agents, he knows every move Daihara makes in Tianjin. The Japanese agent decides to make use of his Green Gang connection. <laughs> On the night of November 8th in Tianjin, no one sleeps that night and many residents trembled with fear. 当时我六岁 Armed and under the cover of darkness, gang members organized by Dohara attack government offices and the police station. The Japanese issue orders by telephone from their concession. A battle rages in the street as Wang and his security force fight the attackers. They kill three, capture 61, and execute 10 immediately. The terror vanishes in the early morning sunshine, but something has changed at the Garden of Serenity. Puyi is gone.
Days later, he appears in northeast China. Soon, the puppet state of Manchukuo is founded, and Puyi is placed on its throne. This file concerning a teacher is kept in the archives of Nankai University. Grace Divine Leo is an American citizen, and in 1934, she and her husband settled in Tianjin's French concession. Her memoirs are a record of life in the concessions. In late July of 1937, it's hot and Grace is sleepy. But the roar of aircraft awakened her. She's terrified by what she sees. In a letter to her family, she writes of how they stand on the roof in the sunshine and watch dozens of Japanese aircraft drop bombs. They hear the deafening explosions and watch fires erupt. The bombing of Nankai University is ruthless. Grace witnesses the Japanese bombing of Nankai University and downtown Tianjin. The brutal assault lasts for five days and nights. Tianjin eventually falls to the Japanese army. She watches as truckloads of bodies are carried away. The Japanese hold a grand ceremony as they enter the city. Five-year-old Zhu Zongliang is a former Nankai middle school student. He and his family move to the British concession to avoid the fighting. There he begins an association with a secret organization that begins with a question he asks about an explosive device. He is taking his first step on the road to becoming a legend. In 1937, a secret organization is established in occupied Tianjin. Its goal is to resist the Japanese and assassinate those who collaborate. Most of its members are teenagers from prominent families. The grandson of Manchukuo Prime Minister Zhang Xiaoshu, the son and daughter of General Sun Liangzhong, and the niece of General Feng Jian are all part of the organization. They live in foreign concessions that enjoy a special status. The concessions offer shelter for their activities. <laughs> One morning in April 1938, Zhu Zongliang discovers the pocket money his father gives him is different. The strange name of Federal Reserve Bank of China is printed on the notes. It baffles him. 
He doesn't know that the world around him is changing rapidly. After occupying Northeast China, the Japanese army creates a pro-Japanese political system. After establishing the provisional government of the Republic of China, it facilitates creation of the Federal Reserve Bank of China. To finance the purchase of huge amounts of strategic materials, banknotes are printed day and night. In February 1938, Cheng Sugang, the supervisor of Tianjin Customs, takes the post of manager of the bank's Tianjin branch. Chung studies in both Europe and America. With his doctorate in economics, he was appointed to the Chinese delegation at the Paris Peace Conference. In the 1930s, he edges himself into the upper strata of society as the commissioner in Peking of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of China. On December 28, 19-year-old Zhu Zongliang takes his first assignment. He's to assassinate Wang Julin, chairman of the Japanese-controlled Tianjin Chamber of Commerce. He pulls the trigger at the gate of Feng Zeyuan Hotel in the French concession. He succeeds, and the organization he belongs to becomes well-known almost overnight. Chongqing, one of the names on this list stands out. It's Cheng Suguang. The encounter between the patriotic Jew and the traitor Cheng is a dramatic story worthy of the cinema. Chung is in his 50s with thinning hair and gold-rimmed glasses. His license plate number is 1657. He lives in a garden house in the British concession and enjoys watching movies. This is all the information Jew is able to learn. It's enough, though, to plow on Chung. <laughs> This European style building on the bank of the High River is Da Guangming Theater. Its appearance remains unchanged. On April the 9th of 1939, the American movie Gunga Din is showing. Chung and his family go to see it. As the movie is about to end, a notice saying someone is waiting to meet manager Chung outside the theater appears on one side of the screen. Chung stands up. His wife grabs his arm and asks him to sit down. His decision to stand will lead to his death. <laughs> Bought 
就看那个电影，啊，这个是枪，电影里的枪特别响，啊，啊，你说我的枪是哪里？Jew escapes in the confusion that follows. Consequences of the incident are beyond his imagination. The assassination triggers a one-year political wrestling match between Japan and Britain. The British concession in Tianjin becomes the center of this storm. The municipal commit suspects. Sisters 14 In December of 1941, Japan pushes its war of expansion across the entire Pacific Ocean. America and Britain officially declare war on Japan. The following morning, 30,000 notices are posted in Tianjin, explaining that Japan now considers Britain to be an enemy. Dozens of Japanese army trucks drive into the British concession. Armed Japanese soldiers arrest a large number of British and Americans. The Japanese army occupies the British concession. The British and Americans are taken to the Astor Hotel to be registered and get armbands indicating their nationality. They are to always wear the armbands and always be ready to be inspected. What Konstantin von Hanneken endured 20 years earlier as Germany was defeated is now happening to the British and Americans. Japan and Britain reach an agreement to exchange consulate workers and their families. Britain, Desmond Power is one of them. In his book, Little Foreign Devil, he writes that it's not a time to ask questions. Well-wishers swarm around the bus, laughing, crying, waving handkerchiefs, and shouting goodbye. Japanese fists, heels, and rifle butts force a general retreat to the pavement. The remaining British and American nationals are sent to a concentration camp in Shandong province. They will spend three nightmarish years here. Grace avoids being registered. By a miracle, she escapes. She hides at home and stays out of sight for more than 1,000 days and nights. In the autumn of 1945, 
she finally sees the faces of her fellow citizens once again. On the 15th of August in 1945, Japan surrenders and World War II ends. At the end of September, 18,000 U.S. Marines land at Tanggu and enter Tianjin. They take the place of the Chinese military and accept the surrender of the Japanese army. After entering Tianjin, the U.S. Army sets up headquarters in this building. October 6th of 1945 becomes an historic day in the modern history of Tianjin. At nine o'clock in the morning, more than 50 U.S. Marines escort seven Japanese military officers to this building. The commander of the Japanese Army in Tianjin and six other officers walk up to desks and disarm themselves. And then both sides sign the surrender. Less than 300 meters from the U.S. Marine Corps headquarters, several thousand Japanese are waiting in line. They are trying to send money to Japan at a bank. Three years before, the Japanese drove British and American nationals out of the concessions. Now it's their turn to leave. Their only choice is to wait to be repatriated at some point in the future. Victory, defeat, joy, and sadness sweep through Tianjin in turn. The history of nine countries' concessions is drawing to a close. The story always returns to where it begins. In 1902, the American concession is incorporated into the British concession. On March 27th of 1917, the Chinese government declares the German concession is officially returning to China. It becomes the first special district of Tianjin. On August 14th of 1917, China takes back the Austro-Hungarian concession and renames it the second special district of Tianjin. On August 6th of 1924, the Russian concession is reclaimed. It will become the third special district of Tianjin. On January 15th of 1931, China takes back the Belgian concession and names it the fourth special district of Tianjin. In October of 1945, the Chinese government takes back enemy occupied areas and the Japanese concession in Tianjin. By the end of 1945, China officially takes back the rest of the foreign concessions. The 80-year dominance of foreign concessions in Tianjin is at an end. The eight decades of control by nine foreign countries leave many stories behind amid the splendor of the old colonial style buildings. The stories tell the historic rise and decline of an international city. The prosperity of today's Tianjin washes away the stains of the past. It becomes a city 
that openly embraces the international community with confidence and tolerance. In August of 2013, Zhu Zongliang returns home to Tianjin after 70 years. As a young assassin, he escapes the dragnet of the Japanese in Tianjin, only to be arrested in Shanghai, where he is betrayed by a traitor. He is tortured by the Japanese, but survives. Zhu's destiny and that of Tianjin are intertwined in the rise and fall of international intrigue. Born nearly a century ago, a man reflects on the decades of turmoil and prosperity. The opportunity of earning great wealth draws resourceful people from far away. The invasion of foreign banks leads to soul searching among China's financial community. A Peking opera master witnesses the rise of a business legend who creates China's first mall.